so welcome students in the video la nama disorders of the circulatory system pathi paapom in the video la high blood pressure pathi paakaporam then coronary artery disease pathi paakaporam myocardial infarction appadi pathi paakaporam angina pectoris stroke paakaporam then finally rheumatoid heart disease pathi paakaporam first vandha nama hypertension paakalam <coughs> When your heart beats, it pumps blood round your body. As the blood moves, it pushes against the sides of the blood vessels. The strength of this pushing is your blood pressure. As your heart pumps, the flow of blood in your arteries and your blood pressure rises and falls in a regular wave pattern. Blood pressure is shown as two numbers. The top number, or systolic pressure, is the pressure when your heart beats. The bottom number, or diastolic pressure, is the pressure when your heart relaxes healthy blood vessels can stretch to allow for these changes in pressure damaged blood vessels are less stretchy which increases blood pressure constant high blood pressure puts extra strain on your heart and blood vessels over time this increases your risk of a heart attack or stroke it can also cause problems for your eyes and kidneys high blood pressure speeds up the process of atherosclerosis where fatty streaks form inside the arteries. If one of these cracks, it can cause a blood clot in your arteries. This is what causes a heart attack or stroke. It's never too late to make changes to protect your heart. Think about your future, being there for your family, your plans and dreams. Could your blood pressure affect this? There are small steps you can take today to lower your risk. If you smoke, stop smoking. Make heart healthy eating and drinking choices. Move more, lose weight. Talk to your doctor about medications. Hypertension. Hypertension is the most common circulatory disease. The normal blood pressure is 120 by 80 mmHg. In case when the systolic pressure exceeds 150 mmHg, and diastolic pressure exceeds 90 mmHg persistently that condition is called hypertension so systolic pressure vandu 150 mmHg ku melayo diastolic pressure vandu 90 mmHg ku melayo continuous a increase aachuna adha tha nam hypertension solluvom uncontrolled hypertension may damage the heart brain kidney okay Next, coronary heart disease, and then Pakla. Coronary artery disease, or atherosclerosis, is caused by plaque buildup along the inner walls of the coronary arteries, the major blood vessels that supply the heart with blood, oxygen, and nutrients. Plaque consists of fatty materials in the blood that can decrease blood flow to the heart, often resulting in a heart attack. Risk factors include family history, high cholesterol, high blood pressure and lifestyle choices like smoking, alcohol consumption and lack of exercise. You can reduce your risk by pursuing a healthy lifestyle or by taking medications. Coronary heart disease occurs when arteries are lined by atrium. So arteries la la vandu படிவுகள் இருந்துச்சுன்னா The cholesterol rich atheroma forms plaques in the inner lining of the arteries making them less elastic and reduces the blood flow. So continuous and the cholesterol rich contents all on the arteries la on the lining la abbe padiyum bodu enna aduna arteries making them less elastic so idu vand elastic ah illama pannirudhu then reduce the blood flow. Then plaque grows within the artery and tends to form blood clots then forming coronary thrombus so in the padivugal la valandute irundhuchu appadina arteries la idu vand blood clots uruvaagum then vand 
ஃபார்மிங் கரோனரி த்ராம்பஸ் கரோனரி ஆர்ட்ரிஸ்ல வந்து கட்டிகள் உருவாக ஆரம்பிக்கும் ரத்த கட்டி தென் த்ராம்பஸ் என்ன கரோனரி ஆர்ட்ரி ரிசல்ட் இன் த ஹார்ட் அட்டாக் ஸோ கரோனரி ஆர்ட்ரி கரோனரி ஆர்ட்ரினால என்னது ஹார்ட்டுக்கு போகக்கூடிய ஆர்ட்ரியை தான் நம்ம கரோனரி ஆர்ட்ரின்னு சொல்லுவோம் ஸோ ஹார்ட்டுக்கு பிளட் சப்ளை பண்ணுற ஆர்ட்ரிஸ் அதில் வந்து பிளாக்கேஜ் பிளட் கிளாட்டிங் இருந்துச்சுன்னா இட் லீட்ஸ் டு ஹார்ட் அட்டாக் நெக்ஸ்ட் ஸ்ட்ரோக் பற்றி பார்க்கலாம் A stroke occurs when the blood flow in part of your brain is blocked. After just a few minutes, the starved brain cells begin to die. Normally, the brain receives blood via two major pairs of arteries, which branch throughout brain tissue. and supply your brain cells with a constant flow of oxygen, glucose and nutrients necessary for their functions. In one type of stroke, ischemic stroke, an artery in your brain narrows or becomes completely blocked. preventing normal blood flow The blockage may be caused by a blood clot also called a thrombus which forms in an unhealthy artery of the brain The lack of blood flow causes the tissue the artery supplies to become starved or ischemic Similarly the blockage may be due to an embolus a blood clot that forms elsewhere in the body and travels to the brain the embolus lodges in a narrowed artery and obstructs blood flow immediate treatment for your stroke Immediate treatment for your stroke may help to minimize brain cell injury and death. If you have an ischemic stroke, you may be given medication to break up the clot causing your stroke. Later, your doctor may recommend surgery such as carotid and arterectomy to reduce your risk of having another ischemic stroke. Stroke. stroke is a condition when the blood vessels in the brain burst that is brain hemorrhage or when there is a block in the artery that supplies in the brain or thrombus we call it as atherosclerosis so <coughs> brain la irukku kudi blood vessels and the burst aanavo alladhu brain ku pora blood vessels any blockage irundavo it leads to stroke abin pa the part of the brain tissue that supplied by this damaged arteries dies due to lack of oxygen <clears throat> so the part of the brain tissue that is supplied by damaged arteries so damage on arteries mulama blood supply irunduchina anga vandu oxygen sariya poi kedaikadu so oxygen sariya kedaikadanalada and the arteries vandu damage as a being okay so cerebral infarction or heart failure it leads to cerebral infarction or heart failure next to angina pectoris patla <clears throat> angina is a squeezing chest pain that occurs when the heart muscle isn't getting enough blood the heart is a muscle that pumps blood around the body like any muscle the heart needs an energy supply mainly oxygen and sugar which it gets from the blood 
The arteries of the heart, called coronary arteries, carry blood to the heart muscle. Every part of this heart is getting a good supply of blood, so the heart muscle is a healthy pink. Okay, so what happens when a buildup of cholesterol-filled plaque in one of your coronary arteries gets big enough to reduce blood flow? One part of your heart muscle gets less blood than before. You can see the pink fading. If you're at rest, your heart is not pumping hard. So even though blood flow to the heart is reduced, the heart muscle is still getting enough blood to quietly pump away and you won't get angina. But if you exert yourself like walking up a hill, your heart really starts pumping without the blood it needs to work this hard. It will scream out in pain. Though painful and attack of angina doesn't injure the heart, because when you slow down your heart muscle starts getting the blood it needs again. But a person with angina is at increased risk for a heart attack, which does injure the heart. So angina pectoris, angina pectoris is experienced during early stages of coronary heart disease. Coronary heart disease is the early stages. So we can experience the angina pectoris. Angina pectoris is nothing but the pain in the heart muscle, ischemic pain in the heart muscle. Arthrima, arthroma may partially block the coronary artery and reduce the blood supply to the heart. So, so partially block the coronary artery and reduce the blood supply to the heart. Heart to the blood supply reduce panadin patro. As a result, there is a tightness and choking with difficulty in breathing. So tightness in the uh, chest region and uh, difficulty in the breathing. This leads to angina or chest pain. So, Usually it lasts for a short duration of time. So that's the one angina or chest pain of your So myocardial infarction. Okay. Myocardial infarction, commonly referred to as heart attack, is the sudden death of part of the heart muscle due to loss of blood flow. This occurs when one of the coronary arteries, the arteries that supply blood to the heart, is blocked. The blockage is commonly due to atherosclerosis, cholesterol plaques or fat deposits on the wall of blood vessels. As the plaque builds up, the vessel becomes narrow, restricting blood flow. Under stress, the plaque may rupture. This triggers formation of blood clot on top of the plaque, leading to complete blockage of blood flow. When this happens in the coronary artery, the downstream patch of the myocardium dies from lack of oxygen. Weakened heart muscle may disrupt electrical activity of the heart and subsequently cause cardiac arrest. Coronary angioplasty is a non-surgical procedure used to open narrowed or blocked coronary arteries. It can also be performed as an emergency treatment for myocardial infarction. The first part of the procedure is to localize the site of blockage. This part is called cardiac catheterization. A guiding catheter is inserted through the femoral artery at the groin and threaded all the way to the aorta. The tip of the catheter is placed at the beginning of the coronary artery to be investigated. A radio-opaque dye is injected through the catheter into the coronary artery. This enables real-time visualization of the artery using X-ray imaging. A narrowed part of an artery would appear as a bottleneck on an X-ray image. After the location of narrowed artery is identified, Angioplasty can begin. A guide wire with a deflated balloon is inserted and pushed to the location of blockage. The balloon is inflated to crush the plaque. 
At the end of the procedure, the balloon is again deflated and removed together with all catheters and guide wire. In some cases, a stent is inserted together with the balloon, inflated, and left in place of the plaque to keep the artery open permanently. So myocardial infarction, heart failure in any part, the prime defect in heart failure is a decrease in cardiac muscle contractility. So heart failure is the main cause of cardiac muscle contractions and decreased level of function. The Frank Sterling curve sips downwards and towards the right such that for a given end diastolic volume. A failing heart pumps out a smaller stroke volume than the normal healthy heart. So, we am going to talk Frank Starling mechanism. So, this is flow chart. So, this is the stroke volume. So, this is the EDV. This is the diastolic pressure volume. Normal heart is the stroke volume. It is red color. It is upward. Whereas, heart failure is the stroke volume. Shift downwards and towards right side and pop. Now, towards right side. So, healthy heart to parang every all the on the stroke on him. Okay. Whereas, uh, heart failure of Dinsuli so Padona is on the uh, shift downwards and the uh, right side of Suli Padona. Okay. When the blood supply to the heart muscle or myocardium is remarkably reduced, leads to death of the muscle fibers. This condition is known as heart attack. So heart muscles carry on a blood supply when they stop or reduce our It leads to death of the muscle fiber. So it leads to heart attack. So that's an the heart attack of dinner. Next one the rheumatoid heart disease of dinner and What is acute rheumatic fever? Acute rheumatic fever is an illness caused by a germ called Streptococcus or Strep A, which causes sore throats and skin sores. It can be passed between people by touching, coughing and sneezing. In some people, if sore throats and skin sores are not treated early with antibiotics, an illness called rheumatic fever develops. Rheumatic fever can cause painful swollen joints. Fever uncontrolled jerky movements and inflammation or swelling of the heart. There is no single test that can be done to diagnose rheumatic fever, but it is very important to get diagnosed quickly at the local health service or hospital because it can have long-lasting effects on the heart. What is rheumatic heart disease? The symptoms of rheumatic fever usually go away in a few weeks, but in some people, if the heart has been involved, the valves can be left damaged or scarred, which means the heart does not pump blood around the body effectively. This is called rheumatic heart disease. Every time someone gets rheumatic fever, there may be more damage to the heart valves and the heart disease gets worse. Sometimes open heart surgery is needed to repair or replace the heart valves. Who gets this disease? Rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease used to be common in most areas of Australia, but as living conditions improved, houses became less crowded, so the chance of strep A being passed between people was reduced. As access to healthcare improved, it's all but disappeared from most of Australia. It is mostly seen now in Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander, and Pacific Islander populations. Children aged between 5 and 14 years are most at risk for a first episode of acute rheumatic fever. Why do school staff need to know about this disease? School staff are well placed to identify children who are not well. Children with any of these symptoms should be seen by a health professional as soon as possible. Sore throat. Skin sores. Sore or swollen joints particularly the knees, ankles, elbows, and wrists. Fever. 
jerky movements in the body or face, changes in the quality of riding, or new difficulty walking. What can you do to help prevent rheumatic fever? Encourage kids to report sore throats and get them checked out by a health professional. Strep throat will not develop into rheumatic fever if treated with antibiotics early enough. Make sure that hand washing with soap is encouraged during the school day and that the facilities are available to do so. There is good evidence that hand washing with soap is effective in the prevention of skin sores. Be aware of the exclusion policy at the school. Strep A in skin sores is very contagious and should be covered with a watertight dressing. Work together with the school, health services and community to encourage the children who have had rheumatic fever or who have rheumatic heart disease to get regular antibiotic injections every 21 to 28 days. These injections are the best way to prevent further rheumatic fever and manage rheumatic heart disease. School staff play an important role in supporting children with chronic medical conditions. It is important that children get their injections on time and attend medical appointments as required. Sore throats and skin sores are not a normal part of childhood. If you are concerned about any of your students, please refer them immediately to the local health facility. So rheumatoid heart disease is a Rheumatic fever is an autoimmune disease which occurs two to four weeks after throat infection, usually a streptococcal infection. <coughs> So autoimmune disease of dinner, immune system or a function in and patona, our body on the protect pantra. But no immune system won't body key against our group and the disease in a mound the autoimmune disease in soldier. The rheumatoid heart disease is the fever. This rheumatic fever is an autoimmune disease. So it occurs uh, two to four weeks after the throat infection, usually a streptococcal infection. The antibodies developed to combat the infection cause damage to the heart muscle. So it will produce our antibodies on the to combat the infection cause damage to the heart. So produce our antibodies on the heart muscles against our control. Then effects include fibrous nodules on the mitral valve, then fibrosis of the connective tissue. And accumulation of the fluid in the pericardial cavity. So, in an effect, certain part of the mitral valve. So, bicuspid valve is clear, heart line. So, anga on the fibrous nodules on the form of the then fibrosis of the connective tissue and accumulation of the fluid in the pericardial cavity. Heart, heart cavity on the pericardial cavity in children, and on the fluid accumulation on the Adhima Thank you.